All right, guys, in today's video, I'm going to do something i uh, never really done on this channel before, which is um, not play a game and just talk about it. So um, it was requested um, actually by a couple of people that I make a video on what are the uh, telltale signs that a game is going to get canceled. And if you go back and look at my channel, I stopped playing this game way before um, anyone else did. And that was because I saw it's death coming. And just like I did with Spell Slingers. Um, and unfortunately, I've just been good at recognizing the patterns because I've played so many card games, especially that have been canceled that I just know what to look out for. And I'm extremely paranoid about what games I invest in since we are um, you know, spending our money just on uh, licensing and not actually owning any property. So um, I just wanted to go over some of the things that um, I, I've noticed um, especially between Spell Slingers and Magic Awaken, the two games that I've covered the most on this channel that actually grew the channel to the, you know, measly 4,000 subs uh, that it is now, or about 4,000 subs now. And, um, you know, I played, I uh, just want to go through some of the games that I've played that have been canceled. Uh, Elder Scrolls Legends, it's still up, but the development is over with. Um, Kaijudo, um, Legend of the Five Rings, Gwent, um, like it's it's so it's been so many i'm just i'm not even thinking of them right now but trust me i've, I've played a, I've, a lot of card games that have been canceled um so the uh the first red flag that i want to mention that um i think you should look out for is when there's a lack of advertisement and when there's a lack of advertisement it um it, it, it just that to me that's just the the very beginning i realize i'm kind of looking to my right of um you know that that's the red flag for me for being sketched so um if the company isn't putting in money into advertisement it's probably because they plan on just you know um pulling the rug at some point and they're trying not to waste money on um having like an ad campaign when they're just trying to sucker you out of your money and maximize uh how much money they're getting out of you and um you know so it's all about you know just being a scumbag basically I'm not saying these games definitely did that i'm just saying that's what i I suspect and I know other games have done that in the past um so the other thing that was really weird about spell slingers is like I play card games I was playing magic at the time I was playing pioneer and I would ask people I'm like hey man are you, are you excited for spell slingers and they had no idea what the hell I was talking about and so I'm being surrounded by avid magic players people that have been playing magic for decades and they have no idea this new magic game is coming out which is absurd um so that was a problem for spell singers right off the bat same thing with magic awaken the Her uh, harry potter is one of the most recognizable well-known um franchises in the world and there were so many people that had absolutely no idea about this game and it's literally like a better clash royale it has the same that's that's what really made me think that it was going to do well was um you know initially when i was waiting like over a year for the game to come out was um you know you have you basically have the elixir bar at the bottom you have the same amount of like cards that clash royale had you know you have a rotating hand um with a sequence that's different every game that you pop into um you know so it had, it had a lot of similarity to clash royale clash royale does great and um you know it had the harry potter ip and uh no one knew the game was coming out nobody knew uh it, it, i didn't even i don't even think i saw a single advertisement for the game until like two weeks before its launch which was just absolutely insane might have even been a week before its launch. Um, let's see. Um, okay, so for, as far as Magic Awakening goes, the fact that there were two publishers, you have NetEase and WB, that was super, super sketchy to me from the beginning, um, especially because I remember being able to like see both options like in the app stores. And um, I remember seeing like comments of people saying like, especially in like Facebook groups that like, why are there two? I downloaded the wrong one. Um, really, really strange, really sketch. I've never really seen something like that before. And so that was, uh, that was like the second red flag. So the lack of advertisement in the double publisher made no sense to me. And then immediately after, um, you know, we all joined the, uh, the WB, uh, client, I played, uh, the Taiwan server. Um, you know, when it was in Chinese and I, I didn't know what any of it was saying, but I was using like translators and stuff like that because I just like the game. And 
um, they had a PC client and so did NetEase, but we didn't have a PC client, but they do. And they never addressed that at all. They never said anything about giving us one. They, they were kind of just like, you know, don't say anything about it. And, um, you know, hopefully people just don't care. And that was super bizarre. So I was, I was sitting here playing like low quality LED player stuff, trying to stream it. Cause the, there's a quality drop whenever you use an emulator, obviously. And it just was, it, it was just stupid. And that was another red flag for me. So my confidence level was already like really low, but I'm really liking the game. And it's growing my channel. Uh, it, my channel like tripled the first month I was covering the game, which obviously isn't that hard to do when you only have a thousand subs and you go to three thousand. But it was really exciting for me and growing the community and everything. Um, let's see. Oh, the other thing was the uh, ambassador program, which they did eventually ask me to join. Um, so I've done content for uh, AFK, um, AFK Journey, and even though my channel. I only had like 3000 something subs at the time that they contacted me, they were still paying me to make the videos. So, you know, it was only like a few, and they might've paid me. Well, maybe I'm not even supposed to say how much they paid me. I don't remember, but it was sponsored videos. It wasn't much, but they paid me something for my time. And the magic Waken ambassador program always felt like, again, like they didn't want to put anything, actually any effort into it. They just wanted you to cover the game and basically provide them a free advertisement, um, which always, you know, that felt really strange to me. Um, it honestly, it just made it feel like a joke, especially when, um, there's, there's been other companies that have sent me like emails in my channel small and they're like, Hey, if you cover this game and you put, um, we'll give you your own affiliate link. And then, you know, if someone uses it, you'll get a percentage of the sale, even though that's not really going to happen. It's still at least possible. Whereas like the Magic Awaken Ambassador program, they was just like, we'll mention you one time and then you can, um, you know, basically uh, promote our game for free. So uh, just more garbage. Um, the other huge thing I remember uh, when I was waiting for the game to come out um, for us, I was playing the Taiwan version and I went into the shop and I was calculating like how much packs are per pack and like trying to figure out what the best deals were and all that kind of stuff. And then when we got our version, the prices were like multiple times more expensive, which was another huge red flag for me. Um, Cause again, it just feels like they're just trying to maximize how much they can take from you before they pull the rug. Um, so that was another, uh, another thing that made me think that the game was not going to be around. Um, another thing was uh, the Taiwan version and the beta both had Flitwick available, which was my favorite Echo. And unless I'm mistaken, I don't think Flitwick ever got released. Or if he did, it was like way, way, way after I stopped playing the game, which is really weird when you have like these really inconsistent like schedule uh, differences between between the games. And also whenever you have like, um, this, is, this is something that Spellslingers did where um, the release schedule for anything would just nothing ever made any sense. And it like, we would just find out one day where we we're going to get new content. Um, but the yearbooks came out like one, two, and three for magic weekend really, really fast. And then they just like dropped the fourth one, like so far down the road. I'm pretty sure it was four. It might've been one, two, three, four, then five, but I'm pretty sure it was one, two, three, and then four kind of like out of nowhere. And that's also a sign that your game is doomed whenever the release schedule is just whack. Um, also like if it's a card game, for example, and they're releasing like four sets a year, and then all of a sudden it's three sets a year, that means things are really slowing down and, um, you know, your game's probably dead pretty soon. Um, you know, and obviously with a, uh, release schedule that is inconsistent, there's obviously going to be uh, poor communication as well, which is, um, really not a good sign. Let's see. Okay, I guess the last thing I want to touch on was how unsustainable Magic Awaken was. The only reason I was spending money on the game was because in my mind, it was just an investment for my channel. So while I spent like 2,500 ish or something like that, I made that money back over the course of me covering the game. So that's the only reason I would ever spend that much money on a mobile game. I never had done that before, by the way. And um, so I just knew what I was getting into. I was kind of like, okay, if I spend a thousand this month and I make like 800 bucks, I'm cool with that. And that's pretty much what was happening. And um, even with spending that much money, however, if a new level, if a new legendary card comes out or 
god forbid a mythic either come out level nine right or at least legendaries did i don't remember what the mythic level starts at anymore but it comes out at level nine so if you're a top louder you really at least for a while you needed it to be like level 13 level 14 and so on and i remember i spent like four hundred dollars i think it was to get mcgonagall to level 13 and that that was just it's just totally absurd and so when a new card comes out you can't even be excited for it because you can't get it to a level that's even close to the level of your other cards at the level that you're probably at you know if you're if your ranks magic awakened you're not going to bring in level nine legendaries um so it's just uh really obnoxious because you can't even be excited for the new content because you can't really um can't really utilize it so that's that's just really uh silly so basically the gotcha was completely unsustainable and um you know again i think that they knew that when they were going into it and so it's just you know how much money can we take before people realize what's going on and uh you know that's just kind of how it is uh the other thing too is when you have a pvp game and you have absolutely no incentive for tournaments you have um no video coverage of tournaments you have i mean just nothing like that that's also uh pretty sus even though i don't really expect that from games but like it's a very heavily uh pvp centric game and um you know they're more focused on like you know uh spin for this like random you know, the, the dress of the week or whatever outfit of the week and um yeah that was just another thing that didn't really sit with me uh too well so um oh that's there's another last thing i guess um when a game doesn't have a roadmap, I also think that that's really weird. And I guess that kind of goes along more with like what I was saying about the scheduling. But um, like for Spellslingers, for example, uh, towards the end of its life, they just started throwing out everything that they had. So they gave us um, two Spellslingers at the very end with no cards. Um, it, it just it just seemed uh, really funky. And when a game isn't upfront about how the release schedule is going to go or isn't like extremely apparent from the beginning, that's something that's just really strange uh and uh that that always is a red flag for me but before i go i do want to ask you guys something real quick do, 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 do. i do plan on covering pokemon pocket i'm gonna try it and uh this is the little uh setup i was working with today i don't know what you guys think about it um you know my walls are blue in my house and um you know i always have that color scheme for the lights in the back and i already had this uh like blue scion border and so you know just let me know what you guys think obviously it's a mobile game so it's going to go in this vertical slot here but um you know if you think it's ugly or garbage or something let me know or if um you know you know somewhere where i can find better stuff but i'm basically just trying to put something together for that but um i know it's been a long time since i made a video and i've been hopping around game to game trying to find something to play but that, again, that's why I'm excited about Pocket and also Shadowverse is coming out uh, next year. And so I'm just trying to find another good digital card game so we can, you know, um, get a community going again. I just think it was it was really fun for me. It wasn't, I barely made any money. I think I, I probably didn't even break even, even though I got really close. Um, but now I've got, you know, a good camera, a good mic, good lighting, all that stuff. And I don't even have a game to play anymore. So um, yeah, just, you know, let me know. But uh Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.